think I'm a little bit unorthodox in lots of ways, but um, I'm really quite proud that I have served with the nursing corps. And what has always been the policy of, you know, the uh, nursing corps uh, is that we always had nurses wherever our boys went. Um, well, I've always been interested in nursing and uh, actually um, I trained at the Women's and Prince Henry's and uh, our matron, as they were called in those days, uh, was Miss Sage. She was uh, the uh, matron in chief during World War II. The thing is that the pay wasn't marvellous and the, uh, you had to supply your own uniforms but very fortunate, wonderful group in my, what they call PTS or class, whatever you want to call it. And um, as I say, a wonderful tutor nurse. I mean, I kept in touch with Placey up until she died. I suddenly joined the army Quite funny, really, because uh, uh, I was actually waiting for my girlfriend, who was always notoriously late, you know, near that young and Jackson's. And um, I saw this sign, you know, the army needs you. And uh, the recruiting place was just a few doors down. I thought I'll ask about CMF while <laughs> I'm waiting. And it turned out that. Um, Ah, oh, this sergeant was rough and ready type, I thought. But anyway, he um, he asked me what I did, and I said I was, uh, uh, you know, a nurse. And he said, well, God. I said, you know, hospital nurse. <laughs> and he said, oh, are you trained? So before I knew where he was, he'd been on the phone to someone, and he said to me, uh, would I be available to go out to... Uh, the barracks if they sent a staff car and I thought oh this would be fun you know picking my girlfriend up in the staff car <laughs> the next day I left the Pakapunyal and of course they thought there was a World War II nurse coming and I arrived didn't know any ranks or anything and I literally thought oh you'd get a day to settle in and they'd show you around you know some form of orientation I started work an hour later and I worked for six weeks. I thought to myself, I'll never get a day off. I didn't do officer's training course properly for well, six months, so it took me, you know, a while. And when the boys used to say about different ranks, I'd say, oh, look, that's not for me to teach you. It's for your officer. And they'll tell you all about it. <laughs> I didn't know that. And well, you know, I picked up a few as I went along, but first time I saluted from my hat off. And uh, then we arrived in uh, uh, Malaya, and uh, the general met us, and you know, the official things, the photos, and all the rest of it. Then we got to Kamunking, which was the British Military Hospital we were being posted at, which was near Taiping. I must admit, I knew more about uh, Korea uh, than uh, I did about Malayan emergency. Uh, of course, there'd been a lot of publicity when, you know, Australia uh, decided to send, you know, their battalion with and become a contingent of the British. So I think there was a lot of this business of people always more or less glorified war, which was terrible, really. You know what I mean? But I think now it's, it's really accepted more why we have to do this. No one wants it. It'd be lovely to have peace all the time. In the Army, I learned so much on administration handling situations and people skills are really, I think they stood me in good stead. 
uh, post uh, services. <laughs>